thank you so much, and God bless you for being here. Uh, the Lord has done great work in the sky today, hadn't he? And we're thankful. Looks like the rain may not be here till 10 or so, and so we're just so blessed to be here. Thank you to all this crew that helped set up and everything this morning. And then uh, also, um, we'll be streaming our service at 1045 live. Now, here's something very important. I want to go ahead and put it out there now. Okay, you ready? When we finish, everybody just can't back out and go. Okay, all right? So we've got a little plan together. If you'll just stay put, okay, we'll kind of tap on your car when it's time for you to back out and leave. Give me a give me a lights flash so I know you heard that. All right, flash your lights so I know you heard that. So when it's over, uh, we can't leave. It'll be like driving somewhere uh, in another country. You know, it's just wherever you want to go as fast as you can get there. We can't do that today, or we're gonna have uh, dents and bumps in uh, in cars, and we don't want that. So. As best you can, if you will stay in your car, and uh, that'll be the safest thing. And um, we want to keep you safe. We don't want anybody catching anything from us. And we're praying that this thing will be over uh, here very soon. Amen? Give me a light flash. Let me hear that. Let me see that. All right, good, good, good. Or you can beep your horn a little bit. It's all right. Okay? I can't get too close there. All right. <laughs> I hear you. Back row. Let's hear y'all back there. All right. <laughs> Back row. Y'all not the front row. Come a little close. Let me turn it down. Okay. All right. Well, let's bow and give the Lord praise. I want to pray for us, and then we're going to go right into our first responsive reading at the top of your purple sheet where it says responsive declaration. I'll be reading the part of leader. You read the part of people. But I want to pray for us first, okay? Let's bow our heads and pray. God, we thank you for this beautiful morning for what it means to us. Easter and the resurrection is everything. It is life for us. It's the power of God for us. Lord, everything in our life hinges on the resurrection. We glory and we're thankful for the cross, but Lord, this morning, 2,000 years ago, you, you uh, uh, rolled that stone back and you walked out into life. And that same life that you gave that day, we can have today in our lives. And we thank you for it. Lord, here our Hear our readings today, hear our scripture, hear our songs as a, a pleasing offering to you because we love you so much and you're so good to us. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's read together responsively. On this day, you won victory over death. You raised Jesus from the grave and gave us life. Glory to you, O God. For us and for our salvation, you overcame death. And open the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into truth. Glo oh. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Everybody together. Now Amen. and forever. Amen. Let's sing together. Steve, lead us. Two things I know the loudest place that people sing, and that's in their shower and in their cars. So today you have nothing to hold you back from just singing as we used to say in the old days, sing letter. You know what that means? Just let her fly. <laughs> as loud as you can, if your spouse has a problem, they can get out and go stand by somebody else's car. Flash your lights. We got some dead batteries out here this morning from all this light flash. Let's sing together, worship the Lord this morning. <clears throat> Here we go. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, Hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Hallelujah. Sing ye hymns and
That's why we're here, continuing on in your responsive reading there. Uh, let's all read together, and then we'll keep right on going. You respond as we read together. Quiet and persistent God, you work miracles in the silent hush before dawn. Strong and surprising God. You roll away every stumbling block, stumbling stone, and bring life to all our dead ends. Glorious and gracious God. You delight in empty tombs and surprising visits. Easter God. You give us joy and cause an alleluia to flow from head to toe. One risen God, God, forever rising in us, we lift our hearts and our voices in joy. Amen? <coughs> we lift our hearts in joy. Let's keep singing. day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he, the word became flesh and the light shined among
day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the storm moved away from the dawn. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold. Got your um, your verses there in front of you this morning, and I want to uh, just take a couple of minutes to, for us to think about together a, a statement that's in the the resurrection story. And I want to challenge you today as we as we think about this. Uh, and here's the, here's the statement that's going to be made by the angels: Why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12 reads like this. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then... They remembered his, that is Jesus, they remembered his words. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their, their words seemed to be like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this real and wonderful event. We thank you that today, God, we can 
We can read it and be filled with joy because we know the rest of the story. But God, I thank you for these women who went to the tomb. I thank you that when they understood what had happened, they went and they shared with their friends. And God, I thank you for your great power that on this day, on this moment, this morning, that you began to change the world forever. Lord, help us to be a part of that by not looking for the living and for life among dead things, but we would look to you as the giver of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it is a great story here. The women coming to the tomb, dark probably. Uh, they were still a little bit frightened. Remember what had happened just three days before? They had uh, seen the sky go dark at noon, and they had seen their Savior die, and they had uh, helped put him in the tomb there with Joseph of Arimathea. They came to this tomb, and, and they were expecting what uh, they had left there three days before. But they found some things that were different. When they came to the tomb, they found that uh, the, the stone was rolled away. They had sealed it earlier. They found that the body of Jesus was not inside. And then lastly, this one would have done me in here. When they turned around, they saw men standing there in bright, uh, shining, uh, amazingly bright clothes. The Bible says they fell to the ground. And that's when the question comes. Why are you here looking for the living among the dead? Why have you come back to this place where death rules and death reigns? Jesus told you that he was going to be alive again. He told you that he was coming out of the grave. Why are you still looking in this dead place? And as I considered that, I, I thought that's a great question for all of us. For every person in our world today, that's a great question. Why do we keep looking for living things among dead things? Why do we keep going back to what we remember and, and looking for something new when there's nothing there but stuff that's old and, and, and finished and done. And so I want to pose that to you in a few questions today. Why, the first one is this. Why do we keep going back to the last thing expecting to find something new? Jesus is moving forward. Jesus is going into the future. Jesus is bringing us to new places. He's growing us. He's expanding us. He's stretching us. And yet we've what? We keep going back to that place. We keep longing for that past experience when God says, I want to do something, what? New. The last thing these ladies remembered was that they had put Jesus in the grave and that he was dead. That he would have no effect on them, no impact on them, nothing. Everything that they had remembered from three days before is what they were expecting to find, and there was nothing there. Death was the end. Henry Ford gets the credit for this response, this, this statement, but it goes something like this. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. <laughs> we need to today in our world in this time, we need as believers, as, as those who are seeking to find God, we need to start looking for the living where there is life. And you know what? There is life in Christ. There is life in a relationship with Jesus. The resurrection, listen, the resurrection was triumph over tragedy. Tragedy was the cross. Triumph was the resurrection. And we live on this side of the resurrection. We should be living in victory. We should be walking in, in, in the great things of God. Letting him stretch us and letting him change us, letting him grow us. But somehow along the way, this world is so heavy and it's so hard on us, we get stuck in the middle. We get stuck between the cross and the resurrection in that dark place of, uh, of Saturday and we, we, get, we get held there. And all we know to do at some point is just to get up and go back to the things that we remember, that Jesus was dead and, and all those things. But I want you to know this morning, Jesus is alive and we need to go forward with God. Don't stay where you are. Pastor uh, served with me in, in Texas, Dennis Wiles. He used to always say, God doesn't even have reverse on his car because he's always moving forward. And today, you don't need to go back 
You don't need to go back. You need to go forward with God. There's a new day. There's a new resurrection. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. And God wants to do a great work in your life. Why do we keep going back to the last thing? Let's go forward to what God has for us in life, a God of victory. The second thing I would pose to you is this. Why do we let our emotions or our heart lead us instead of letting our faith lead us? You know why those women went to that tomb that morning? You know why they got up early as soon as they could after the, 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 the Passover was over, as soon as they could get up and go? You know why they did that? Because their heart was leading them. They loved Jesus and they wanted to take care of him. They wanted to give him a proper burial. Their emotions were high. They were, they were, they were, they were going back there to do for their Lord all that they could do for him. Emotions... And feelings took them to the tomb that day. But listen carefully to me this morning. There's going to be a million times in your life that are going to happen from this day forward that your heart's going to tell you that all is lost, that there's no hope, that it's not real. This thing that Jesus has taught you is over, it's finished, it's done, that death would have to be better than this. The devil's going to scream everything he can into your life to keep you depending on and leaning on your heart and your emotions and your feelings instead of living in faith. Amen? These ladies were walking in their emotions. But I want to tell you something this morning. Faith will lead you to life. Emotions and heart and feelings and depending on them and just following your heart, it's going to lead you down a path of destruction. But faith will lead you to life. Isn't that the truth of the resurrection? Jesus said, I'm going to come out of that grave. And you know what he did? Three days, he came out of that grave. Alive. It's faith that leads us to life, not feelings, not emotion. Faith is, faith is believing in the word of God that is Jesus and believing that that life that you want, that you long for, that you're dreaming of, that life is not found in anything in this dead world. It's found in Jesus Christ who is alive today. Next one is this. Why do we look to the world for life when it's fake, it's broken, and it's dead? You know, I, I think this, this pandemic should help us see the world for what it is, don't you? This, this, this whole idea, this, this shutdown, this quarantine, this, this uh, virus and the way it spread and the way it shut down the world, I believe that should show us how fragile the world is how quickly that it can be stopped, how suddenly everything can change and all our security can be gone. Three weeks ago, maybe, or maybe four weeks ago, who would have thought we'd be here today, sitting in our cars, staying away from each other instead of in a church service somewhere together? None of us would have thought that, but all of a sudden everything changed. And you know what else it should show us? How little control we have over everything. God is the only answer. Jesus Christ is the only answer to what we need in this world today. But you know what? When it's all over, when the quarantine is lifted, when the, the pandemic is over, when we all go back to our life, you know what's going to happen? Millions of people, including millions of believers, are going to go right back to the world looking they're going to, listen, they're going to go right back to the dead looking for something that's alive. And w listen, some of us are going to be in that mix. As soon as the scare is over, as soon as the cloud is lifted, as soon as the rules are changed, we're going to go right back to the world looking for something that's alive. And listen, all you're going to find there is death and brokenness. It's what the world's full of. The world can't bring fulfillment. We find people, we're always looking for the next big thing, the next big event, the next flashy thing, the next relationship, the next fad, the next drink, the next drug, the next high, the next whatever it may be. We're always looking for what the world is offering us, and it's a place of the dead. It's a place where the blind are leading the blind. It's a place that's, that's, that's lost to the things of God. 
So you've got to ask yourself today, am I looking for the living among the dead? Or am I looking for the life that I want and the life that God has promised me? Am I looking for that in the one who can give it? And that is Jesus Christ. Well, are you? Are you like these women? You're, you're just looking for the living, but you've come to a place where there's nothing but death. Do you keep coming back to the same thing over and over and over again? Do you keep arriving at the same place, wishing for something different? The truth is that you'll never have life until you put your faith in the life of Jesus. You'll never have the life that God wants you to have until you put your full faith and your full joy and your full life and you fully surrender to Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You'll never find it in this dead world. It's not there. But that's not the end. Because something happened in this passage when, when they heard these things from these angels and they began to think about it. Verse 8 tells us that they remembered his words. They remembered that Jesus had told them this. And they were so excited, they were so encouraged that they ran back to the place where they were staying and they began to tell everyone. Here's the truth that I know today. And I'll close with this. When you find life, when you find life, you'll tell everyone about it. But the Bible says uh, the, the disciples didn't believe them. said, y'all are just telling crazy stories. But Peter, Peter began to remember too. He says he got up and he ran to the tomb and he found that Jesus was not there, and all of a sudden everything began to take shape. Because they had found life in Jesus Christ. Will you find your life in Him? When this is all over, will you put your faith in Him? Will you let Him give you the life that you've been longing for? It's not found in this world. It's not found in... Uh, relationships with another human or things of this world, it's found only in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you live today. And because you live, we can live. And we don't have to keep going back to the dead things. We don't have to keep going back to the broken things, the empty things. Lord, we can come to you and have life. Help us today on this Easter 2020, God, to find life and to go forward in it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to encourage you, if God's spoken to your heart today, if there's a decision in your heart, let us know about that. Give us a call. Send us an email. Get, send us a message. Let us know what God's done in your life today. As we sing this song because he lives remember when we finish stay put till we let you know let's sing together Steve. <laughs> Amen. Um.